Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the Eagle stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Am I the Eagle story. This says, Am I the A-hole for calling the cops on my sister after she snuck shellfish in my food? Y'all say that five times fast. She snuck shellfish in my food. She snuck shellfish in my food. She snuck shellfish. She snuck shellfish in my She snuck. <laughs> that was not easy, y'all. I did it slow the first time and I'm so proud that I got through it, but can't do it again. Anyway, that's fucking assault and battery if not attempted murder. So no, you're not the a-hole, but let's see what the freaking crazy story has to say. I, 21 female, and my sister, 23 female, have never had any issues until last week. She and her husband, 23 male, had invited me over for lunch, which is normal for us. I have a severe shellfish allergy. Even touching it makes me extremely itchy. My sister is completely aware of this and has been since we were children. When I got to their house, she said that food was already finished and in the fridge. She claimed that it was just a tuna pasta. Yes, I can eat tuna and many other fish, just nothing with a shell. After she finished cleaning up, we had a short conversation about what's been happening in our lives since it had been a while since we'd seen each other. I got this strange feeling from her her, but just just brushed it off as I was extremely tired that day. She grabbed the food out of the fridge and served it for me, giving me a small bowl in case I don't like it. I couldn't smell much of it, and from what I could smell, I just assumed it was fish, but when I took a bite, I almost immediately felt my throat burning. I was coughing and grabbing at my throat, and her husband kept asking me if I was choking. My sister turned to me panicking and saying, I thought you were exaggerating. Listen, Sherlock Holmes, was it your fucking job to find out if she's exaggerating about a shellfish allergy? Why do you care? It doesn't really involve that many fucking aspects of anyone's life. Like it, peanut butter is a harder allergy to avoid. Freaking milk is a harder allergy to avoid. Shellfish, you could, I, I mean, I haven't touched a shellfish in 10, 15 years. It can be done. Oh my God, this is so fucking crazy. An ambulance was called and I was rushed to the hospital. I was thankfully okay, but they made me stay to be monitored for the next two days. My sister and brother-in-law had tried to visit me, but I told her to get out. She kept apologizing and refusing to leave. I told her that I'll be calling the police on her for what she'd done as it's literally attempted murder and she lost it. She kept screaming at me saying, I know you're faking this. You always act like you're allergic to sell shellfish so I wanted to test you. I'd been pressing the call button for the nurse but they heard her regardless and had asked me if I wanted them removed. I said yes. I explained the whole situation to her and the hospital security and eventually decided that with the help of the nurse and security guards I'd file a report against her. My mother is saying I'm overreacting and that I should have just cut contact but I don't know anymore. Cutting contact is just the first step. Also, when I was a young child, my sister had witnessed me have a severe reaction and went to the hospital where I underwent treatment. She was also there when I was informed I have a shellfish allergy. That word is so hard for me. You may be wondering why I never had an EpiPen on me and that's because I didn't feel the need to as she was my sister. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I'm not in America. My country has free healthcare, so I can't make her pay any medical bills for me. Edit. This has already been updated. Edit. I'm sick of people who refuse to read and continue to blame me for not having an EpiPen. Okay, we get it. Anyway, no, you are not the fucking a-hole. I would absolutely call the cops on her. What's wrong with her? Y'all have a really close relationship and she just became psychotic in between now and the last time you saw her. Like, that's crazy behavior. It's not like you walk into every party and go, excuse me, excuse me. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, remove the shellfish from this room before my allergies act upon me. No, I'm sure she doesn't do that. And when you came, she came to your house, you could have just served her anything but shellfish. 
If she was like, I'm a vegan now and no meat or dairy can touch any of my food or I will have the worst allergic reaction. And you're like, yeah, okay. There's no way you're allergic to meat and dairy. I mean, I still don't think you should put someone's life on the line, but that's a little bit more like realistic. Like mm, maybe she's screwing around and like just saying not to say it. Yeah, pretty sure the shellfish allergy that you watched happen when y'all were little should have been enough indication for you. Don't know why this is one of those lessons that you have to learn multiple times, but I hope the cops teach it to you this time. Let's see what Reddit has to say. As I said, when I saw your original post, not the a-hole, your sister was very aware of your allergy and has seen how you react. She absolutely intended to harm you. 100% agree. Next says, I wonder if the sister's husband was the person that turned his wife against the OP. The sisters grew up together and she witnessed the allergic reactions. She knew that her sister wasn't faking. I wonder if the brother-in-law doesn't like the OP. I mean, that's a fair hypothesis. And then the OP responds, my sister and I never had many obvious problems, but I was very aware she thought she was better than me due to my mother treating her better than me. I was the one who introduced brother-in-law to my sister. We were friends. However, he never had any idea about my allergy. Yeah, no, it's absolutely just the sister who is to blame. I say you call the freaking cops right away. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for calling the cops on my daughter's father and his family after they called my daughter sexy? Just going to give you a warning in advance. There is inappropriate talk about a very, very small baby in this post. Um, nothing happens, I believe. Um, but if something like that would trigger you, you can just go on and skip to the next story for the rest of you. Let's get into it. I just gave birth two weeks ago to my daughter. My baby's dad and his family, mom especially, have been super controlling of my interactions with my baby since I gave birth. If I try putting her in a cute outfit, they pitch a giant fit about it and dress her in something else. If I go to change her diaper, my baby's dad pushes me out of the way and says he's doing it. I went to brush her hair with a soft brush after her first bath yesterday that he insisted on doing and wouldn't let me. And he flipped out said this is my daughter i'm doing it that's funny because for the past nine months i've been the one doing it what is happening here they won't even let me breastfeed because they said i would be making it so she doesn't bond with her dad i was living with her with his family per their culture it's normal but yesterday morning they had taken my daughter downstairs and when i walked into the living room 10 minutes later he and his mom were changing my daughter's diaper and he goes look at you you so sexy she literally had her fucking diaper off i snuck out of the room and called the cops i'm terrified of this people and feeling very vulnerable i don't know so i snuck out and called the cops gave the rundown gave the address and told them i had to get off the phone and go back in the room so i go in and now his mom is saying sexy girl talking to my daughter she did have her diaper back on at this point what could possibly be sexy about a wrinkly little two week old baby? Anyways, the cops show up and I take my daughter and go sit by the cop's car. I give the statements. They ask if there's anywhere I can go. So I had my mom come grab us. The entire time the cops were there, my ex and his mom are screaming at me that my baby is a native baby. I will get what's coming to me. They will win in court and I will never see my kid again because I'm unstable. Try telling the cops I need to be admitted to the hospital for mental health and I wasn't safe around the baby. When the cop asked why he was calling my daughter sexy when he was changing her diaper he blamed it on his their culture and said that you people are the ones who make it weird and that we were the gross ones for thinking he meant it sexual the word sex is in that word you fucking dipshits sexy sexual sexifying a fucking baby for you to say oh you're so beautiful like still weird with the diaper off but like you could also be like okay he wasn't looking there but like sexy oh it's not sexual are you stable 
I know at my mom, I, I'm now at my mom's. He doesn't know where she lives, so that's one plus. The cops basically told me they would investigate it, but it likely won't go very far, so I will have to make a case in court. Am I losing my mind? Is this really a cultural thing? Am I the a-hole for calling the cops over this? He is Puerto Rican and Native American. Well, let me just tell you something. I have a friend who has a husband who has a mom and he had posted a picture on Facebook of himself and his and he's grown he was in his mid-20s at this point and his mother commented um something like look at you sexy ass or "Ooh, my sexy baby she called him sexy uh and they're Puerto Rican I have never heard of that happening ever again I think it's just two fucking weird people who happen to be Puerto Rican, if I had to guess. I don't believe that as a part of their culture. I don't believe that as a part of Native American culture. I think it's a part of fucking uh, PDF file culture, if you wanna know the goddamn truth. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Get a lawyer and a copy of the police report. If you still can, try to breastfeed. They had no right to keep you from doing that. Next says, this for sure, go stay with your mom and consult your lawyer first, but try to draw out the custody as long as possible so you can establish the baby living with you and your mom. Get any evidence you can of them referring to the baby as sexy, text or voicemail. If they admit it on text, it will work in your favor. And as the commenter posted, you absolutely can still breastfeed, consult a lactation specialist. Last says, does the baby daddy admitting to the cop by explaining what he says that he called the baby sexy count as evidence in court they could call the cop up to the stand really fucking fair he said uh i said it but that's not what it means fucking weird no you're not crazy that was a situation where you were being gaslighted by an entire household full of people i'm so sorry but i'm glad you're out of it not the a-hole but i would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story this says am i the a-hole for not wanting to date a police officer I mean, it seems a little judgmental, but maybe you have your reasons. Let's we'll see what the story says. Two months ago, there was a domestic dispute in my building. I, 25 female, was coming home when I noticed two police officers waiting for the elevator. I would have waited for the next one, but we only have two elevators and one was broken. I rode up with the officers and I was surprised to see that we all got off on the same floor, mine. Apparently, the disturbance was the unit next to mine. I've only lived here for three months, so I don't know any of my neighbors. I didn't think too much of it at the time and went into my unit and closed the door. About 30 minutes later, I hear a knock at my door. It was one of the police officers that I had ridden up the, on the elevator. He asked me to open the door, but I was hesitant, so I asked if we could just talk through the closed door. He showed me his badge through the peephole to, I guess, make me feel safer, but that didn't help. He told me that he needed to see my identification because I might be a witness to what occurred in the unit next to mine. I told him that I saw nothing, so I wouldn't be a big help. He told me that either I talk to him now or I I have to go to the police station in the morning, which could take all day. I'm a student. I couldn't take off a whole day to talk about an incident, so I agreed. He didn't come inside my place. We chatted at my door. He asked for him my ID, so I gave him my driver's license. We, he wrote down my information, my number as well, and told me that he would be in contact. Two days later, I spotted him at my building after coming home from class. He asked me how my neighbors were doing, and I said fine and tried to get into my building. He stopped me and said he thought he and I had chemistry and the night the night we met and he asked me out. I told him that I had a boyfriend, lie, and I thought I'd stepped him into my building. Oh, way the fuck overstepping, way the fuck overstepping. I don't think so. The next day, I get a call from my grandmother. She tells me that a nice police officer came by and was asking very personal questions about me. The person she describes sounds exactly like the police officer who asked me out. My license has my grandmother's address. I was living with her before and I haven't had time to go and change it. At this point, I was freaking out. I told her not to talk to him and not to answer the door if he comes back. Two weeks ago, I'm walking home from class and I jaywalked to get to my building. I hear someone calling my name, so I turn around and it's the police officer again. He tells me that he could find me for jaywalking because it's illegal, but he won't if I go out with him. 
Oh, buddy, you trying to lose your job. I told him again that I'm seeing someone, but he tells me that my grandmother told him that I was sick, single. I told him that it's a new relationship, so she wouldn't know. He said that he would hold off on the jaywalking ticket, but not for long. It's been a few weeks since that conversation, but I see him pretty often. I live in a safe neighborhood, but he seems to always be parked somewhere near my school or apartment building. I'm on a student visa. I'm Canadian. I can't afford to have a ticket on my record, but I'm also very worried that this police officer will escalate the situation if I don't go out with him. I told one of my closest friends about this, and she told me that what this police officer doing was romantic, and I'm an a-hole for not going out with him. Ma'am, this is not a rom-com. This is fucking creepy. This is stalker behavior. You absolutely need to report him to his uh, higher ups because he is abusing his position of power. No, you are absolutely not the a-hole. That guy is a huge fucking a-hole. And my sister is dating a cop. And if I were to tell him about this, I'm sure he would be very disappointed as well. Ugh. Oh. Let's see what Red has say. Report him to your community's Bureau of Internal Affairs. Get a lawyer to file an emergency restraining order. This is not normal behavior. Try not to go anywhere alone, especially at night, and be careful. Next says, that friend is a moron. Nothing about this is romantic. It's scary. Next says, seriously, what's romantic about a cop abusing his power, outright lying about her legal responsibilities in regards to the call next door, and then practically using that information to stalk her? 100%. Last says, not to mention corruptly using the threat of a ticket to force her to date him. Terrifying, not the able. I completely agree. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 325 MIV able stories up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.